What's up, everybody? Nick O'Dwyer, back for the 10th inning with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw the Houston Rockets defeat the New York Knicks to win their first ever title in franchise history. We don't have anything like that today, but we do have some very interesting events to get into, including, at the time, the second youngest chess grandmaster to talk about. Before we get into it, though, I hope everybody out there is staying safe, taking care of your mental health first. Remember, mental health is not something to take lightly. It is an important subject. If you're feeling down, you're feeling depressed, remember, you're not out there alone. There are people willing to help. Take care of yourself first. You're the important part here. If you all enjoy what you see, hit that like button. If you want to see more of this type of content or anything else, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into it. This day in sports history. We start out today in 1893, the U.S. National Championships on the women's side. Aileen Terry wins her only major title, defeating Augusta Schultz 6-1, 6-3 in straight sets. One year later in 1894, the International Olympic Committee, or the IOC, is founded in Paris. The IOC is responsible for organizing the Olympic Games and, as of really just recently, the Youth Olympic Games. The modern Olympics were started in 1896, so two years after the IOC had formed. Now we move up to 1900 at the U.S. National Championships on the women's side, which saw Myrtle McAteer defeat Edith Parker 6-2, 6-2, 6-0 in straight sets for her only major singles title. Six years later in 1906, we stay with the U.S. National Championship on the women's side, Helen Homans defeated Maud Barger Wallach 6 4, 6 3 in straight sets for her only major singles title. Now we have a bit of an interesting one in 1917 in Major League Baseball. Ernie Shore, pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, entered the game after pitcher Babe Ruth was ejected for throwing a punch at the umpire after walking the first batter of the game. Ruth didn't agree with the walk. He thought they were strikes. He thought the umpire was squeezing him. So after a bit of a verbal confrontation, they decided to get physical. Ruth punched him. He was ejected. Shore would go on to not allow a hit or a walk throughout the rest of the game, making this technically a combined no-hitter with Babe Ruth giving up the only base runner of the game to that first batter. The Red Sox would end up winning this game 4-0 over the Washington Senators. On the day, Shore, 9 innings pitched and 2 strikeouts. Also in 1917 at the U.S. National Championships on the women's side, two-time defending champion Mola Mallory defeated runner-up Marion Vanderhoef 4-6, 6-0, 6-2 in three sets for her third of eight majors. Now we go to golf in 1922 and Walter Hagen became the first American-born winner of the Open Championship, one stroke ahead of runners-up Jim Barnes and George Duncan. This would be the first British Open of 4 overall for Hagen and the 4th major of 11 overall in his career. Now we move up to 1939 and football player slash wrestler Bronco Nagurski defeated Lou Thez to win the National Wrestling Association World Heavyweight title. This is important because Lou Thez is one of the early pioneers to what wrestling is today. He's one of the most important figureheads in wrestling history, if not one of the best wrestlers of all time. But now we move up to 1963 at the U.S. Open and Julius Boros, with a score of 9 over, wins his second Open and his second of three majors in an 18-hole playoff with Arnold Palmer and Jackie Cupid. At the same time as the U.S. Open at the LPGA Western Open, Mickey Wright defended her title nine shots ahead of runner-up Kathy Whitworth for her second straight Western Open of three overall and her 10th of 13 majors. Six years later, we go to boxing in 1969. Joe Frazier wins via technical knockout over Jerry Quarry in seven rounds to retain the heavyweight boxing title. Now we move up to 1971 and we have a no-hitter alert. Philadelphia Phillies pitcher Rick Wise no-hit the Cincinnati Reds in a 4 to nothing victory. Wise on the day, 9 innings pitch, 1 walk allowed, 3 strikeouts. Now we have one of the most important documents in sports history to get signed in 1972. United States President Richard Nixon signs Title IX, which states, no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjugated to discrimination 
under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Title IX is one of the most important documents in sports history, and I'm not going to get into it here. There are numerous websites, numerous other people you can go to who have actually studied this thing for a living. I could give you a quick breakdown, but I'm probably not the best person that you want to hear what this is actually about. Many people know what the basis of it is, but there is a lot to get into when discussing Title IX. Also in 1972, the great Elvin Hayes was traded to the Baltimore Bullets for Jack Martin. This was a great trade for the Bullets because they got a future Hall of Famer. Hayes was a great scorer, great rebound, pair him along with Wes Unsell, you made for one of the nastiest front courts in the NBA. They made it to multiple NBA Finals, they just weren't able to win multiple, they would only win one championship together. Two years later in 1974 at the LPGA Championship, the 1965 champion Sandra Haney wins once again with a score of 4 under, two strokes ahead of runner-up Joanne Carner. This would be Haney's second major of 4 overall in her career. One year later at the 1975 US Open, Lou Graham with a score of 3 over defeated runner-up John Mahaffey by two strokes in an 18-hole playoff to win his only major championship. Now we move up to 1979 at the Cricket World Cup. The man of the match, Vivian Richards, scores 138 runs as the defending champions, West Indies, defeat England by 92 runs, giving them their second straight championship in the Cricket World Cup. Now we move up six years to the 1985 Senior Tournament Players' Championship, which saw defending champion Arnold Palmer win his final major, 11 shots ahead of runner-up Miller Barber, Lee Elder, Gene Littler, and Charles Owens. One year later in 1986, Pedro Pablo Morales swims a world record 100 meter butterfly in 52.84 seconds. This record would stand until 1995, so nine years. Now we move up eight years later to 1994 and we have a bit of a pre-Armando Gallarada situation, way before Armando Gallarada. Athletics pitcher Bobby Witt was in the middle of a perfect game when Greg Gagne would be called safe at first base, but as replay would go on to show, Bobby Witt beat Greg Gagne to first base in the sixth inning, but umpire Gary Cedarstrom had already called him safe, ruining the chance for a Bobby Witt perfect game. Maybe it wasn't as bad as Gallarada's because it happened in the sixth inning, not the ninth, but either way, when you're having a bad call ruin a perfect game, it can't feel good for you. I'm sure it didn't feel good for Cedarstrom after the game, but nothing he could do about it. Now we move up nearly a decade to 2003, where Barry Bonds steals second base against the Los Angeles Dodgers, making him the first player in MLB history to join the 500-500 club. 500 career home runs, 500 career stolen bases. And I'm not going to get into whether Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame or not. That's up to you. If you really want me to, I can do a specific video on that. All I have to say is, Bonds was a hell of a ball player. Two years later, at the 2005 NBA Finals, the San Antonio Spurs defeated the Detroit Pistons four games to three. Tim Duncan was named MVP of this series, and he averaged 20.6 points and 14.1 boards for the Spurs, while Manu Ginobili added 18.7 points and Tony Parker 13.9 points. For the Pistons, Chauncey Billups had 20.4 points in the series, Richard Hamilton 16.7, and Ben Wallace added a double-double with 10 points and 10 boards. In the Game 7 victory for the Spurs, 81-74, Tim Duncan had 25 points and 11 rebounds, while Manu added 23 points to give the Spurs their third championship of five overall. Three years later in 2008, Felix Hernandez hit a grand slam against the New York Mets, becoming the first pitcher since Steve Dunning in 1971. Oh, and this home run also came off one of the best left-handers in the game, Johan Santana. Now we move up to 2013, where India defeated England to win the ICC Champions Trophy by five runs. Now we move up to 2018, and I'm already going to apologize because I know I'm not going to say this right. The Indian chess prodigy, Ramesh Babu Pradnanada, becomes the second youngest grandmaster at 12 years, 10 months, and 13 days. As of right now, he is currently the fourth youngest to ever get it because there have been two that have since got it younger. But that that is just insane to think. Becoming a grandmaster at only 12 years old, insane. 
Finally in 2019 at the Women's PGA Championship, Hannah Green with a score of 9 under won her first LPGA event by one stroke. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, let me know down in the comment section. If I mispronounce any names, I do apologize. For Nico Dwyer and the 10th inning, stay safe everybody. See you tomorrow.